Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Storm 10 Mini 2-in-1 laptop. And this form factor is quickly becoming my favorite form factor for these thin and light carry around laptops. Most of the time when I'm on the go or even traveling long distances, I personally don't need a huge laptop to get work done online, but there are some cases where I do need a laptop. I need kind of that desktop interface to get some stuff done. And personally, I think that this is the perfect size for something like that. Now, again, I did mention that it's a two in one, but we've got a 10.5 inch display here. It's got that backlit keyboard and we can kind of fold that screen on over and go right into tablet mode with it. If that's how you want to use a device like this. A few months back on the channel, we took a look at the original Storm 10. This is actually the upgraded version with a much more powerful CPU. It's just a more capable system this way. Now, aside from that upgraded CPU, they did keep a lot from the original, like the screen. So we've got an IPS touch display. It's got a resolution of 1920 by 1280, and it's a three by two aspect ratio. Taking a look around the system, you can see we've got a full copper heatsink with this unit and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack over here on the left hand side. Moving over to the right hand side, there's an LED power indicator, our power button, and two USB type C ports. Both of these will support data, but only one of them supports display out. So we actually can do up to 4K 60 out of the first USB type C here, and also transfer data over the second. When it comes to the overall specs of the upgraded Storm 10, for the CPU, instead of using something like the Intel N150 uh, with four cores and four threads, this actually is the Intel N305. It is a pretty big upgrade. We've got eight cores, eight threads, and this will clock up to 3.8 gigahertz. It's got a more powerful iGPU built in, still Intel UHD. 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 4,800 megahertz. And we've also got an upgradable SSD. It's actually a 2280 M.2 SSD. This one came with 512 gigabyte drive, but you can go up to two terabytes with this if you wanted to. 10.5 inch, three by two aspect ratio, IPS touch display. It's got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth built in, a 28 watt hour battery, it's running Windows 11, and it only weighs 900 grams. Now I'd say the main drawback to this laptop is the battery size, and we'll take a look at battery life by the end of the video. I did run a couple tests like video playback and gaming with this thing, so we'll kind of get an idea of what kind of battery life we can see out of this also. Obviously, we've got a small form factor 2-in-1 laptop here, but it's not micro by any means. There are smaller ones on the market. A uh, 7-inch, I think, is just kind of unusable for most people. 10.5-inch kind of hits that sweet spot right there. Really nice keyboard. It's a chiclet style. 1.2 millimeters of travel with the keys here. Trackpad works great. It's definitely smaller than something on a 16-inch, but we've also got the built-in touch screen, so you can navigate that way if you need to. And uh, speakers are downward firing. When it's on the table, it actually fires back up at you pretty decently. And uh, with some testing, you'll kind of hear it. Since we've got Wi-Fi 6 built in with this thing, web browsing is really snappy. Just heading over to the X Plus website with the Storm 10 listed. Everything loads right up and uh, we're ready to scroll through this page here. There's a lot of images that have the load here. So it's not bad at all, and that N305 can definitely handle web browsing, document editing, email checking, even 4K video playback. And obviously on this built-in screen, you're not going to need to do 4K, but the N305 does have enough power to do it. So if you're going out of USB Type-C over to a 4K display, no problem at all. This is a 4K HDR LG demo over on YouTube. Speakers here actually sound better than I thought they would. Uh, since they're downward firing, they're actually hitting the table and then kind of bouncing back up. Not horrible, not a bunch of bass though either because we don't have a large cavity here for those speakers to sit in. The Storm 10 isn't marketed as a gaming laptop and I wouldn't pick it up specifically for gaming, but when it comes to low-end Steam games and even emulation, this N305 can handle quite a lot. It's not going to do something like Cyberpunk 2077, it's probably just going to fall right on its face, especially given that we've only got 16 gigs of RAM. But here's Silk Song at 1920 by 1280, running at 60 FPS all day. Indie games, older games, you're going to have a pretty good time with it. Even something like Skyrim can run on this at 60 FPS with a low medium mix. And if you wanted to go back just a bit more, here's Left 4 Dead 2. We're at high settings, 1920 by 1280, so we're using that native resolution of the display itself, and it's running really well. 
So yeah, if you wanted to play a few indie games and older titles natively on this thing, you definitely could. Cloud gaming is something else that's going to work really well since we've got Wi-Fi 6 here. If you wanted to do uh, GeForce Now or even Xbox Cloud Gaming, that'll be great if you're into it. But one area this little Intel M305 actually shines in is emulation. It'll do Dreamcast, PSP, GameCube, Wii, and even PS2. Here's some Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator. I've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom. We're at 2x resolution right now. And I know it might be a bit hard to see, but I've got the FPS listed up in the top right hand corner. It handles this really well. I also went through and I tested Automodalista, Simpsons Hit and Run. At 2x for GameCube and Wii emulation, you're going to be able to get a lot of these games done. Now I'm sure there's probably a few here and there that might lag at 2x, so you'd have to drop it down to native. And the CPU here isn't burning a lot of power while doing emulation like this. We're only pulling close to 8 watts right now, and at 1x or the native resolution, it'll drop down from there. But like I mentioned, this will also do PS2 emulation. We're at 2x the native resolution of the PS2 with Gran Turismo 4, and it feels pretty good. Now one game that I had to drop down to 1.5x was God of War 2, but that's just a harder one to emulate. And I'm using the DirectX backend here. You can always swap over to Vulkan, see if it'll work better. Sometimes they work better with DX11 or Vulkan over here on these Intel chips. Last thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life. And like I mentioned, that's kind of the one main downside to this unit. They would have had to make the unit bigger or thicker to put a bigger battery in it. It's got a 28 watt hour battery, so it's definitely on the smaller side. With the screen brightness set to 50%, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, native video playback, meaning we're not streaming online, getting around 5 hours and 43 minutes of runtime out of it, and that's 1080p video. Video streaming from YouTube, around 3 hours and 20 minutes, and indie gaming, around an hour and a half. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of the big downside here. You can definitely keep it plugged in and charge it using a PD charger over USB Type-C, so that's definitely a plus, but it would be nice to get a little more runtime out of this thing. Personally, I'd love to see more laptops in this form factor. I mean, that 10.5 inch to an 11 inch display, even without being a two-in-one, would be really nice, especially, you know, given the way this is set up. The body is fully constructed of aluminum. The hinges here feel nice. The chiclet style keyboard is way better than you'd think it'd be on a small laptop like this. So yeah, I mean, if more manufacturers would get into this form factor or back to this form factor, offering more powerful chips, I think it would be pretty awesome. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the upgraded Storm 10, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.